Amen. Amen. All right, so um, we are in uh, part two of our home improvement series. Um, As we uh, started last week, we talked about building a foundation. We talked about um, that first, um, before we make any home improvements, we need to make sure that our foundation is where it needs to be, that we have a firm foundation. And we defined a firm foundation as a foundation that has been built and established on the truth of the word of God. Before you build anything, the foundation has to be firm. We talked about the scripture that says uh, one builds his house on rock, one builds his house on sand. The one that built his house on the rock, when the storms came and the winds blew and the levees broke, that house stood firm. The one that was founded on the word, but the one that had no foundation, the one that was built on sand when the storm came, when life began to be life in, when issues began to happen, when the enemy began to attack, when the storm came and the winds blew, that house fell and great was its fall. So we said that we need to have a firm foundation. Not one that is built on our experiences, not one that is built on our feelings, not one that is even built on our traditions, but one that is founded on the word of God. So as we continue our home improvement this week, uh, I want to dive into what it means to have home improvement or to build community and relationships according to the word of God. So um, I don't know if they said this in the beginning. Today is College Sunday. So um, if we have any college uh, kids here, would you you raise your hand? Just we want to acknowledge you guys. Thank you guys for showing up on College Sunday. Yes, 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 yes. And so I thought that this, this, this would definitely fall in line with that. Um, because community and relationships is a big thing as you are in college. But for the rest of us, it's an even bigger thing. So um, uh, uh, community and relationships according to the word. Uh, I wanted to define what community is, and you've heard me say this before, but uh, community is a perceived connection between a group of people based on an overlaps of intent, identity, an experience, okay? It is a perceived connection between a group of people based on an overlaps of intent, identity, and experience. There was a popular television show during the pandemic, wound up being one of the greatest and the most popular television shows, according to studies, in the past 25 years, Okay? I got on this show very late, uh, but when I did, I realized why. Um, this show was called Community. Very simple. It was called Community. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? It was a very hilarious show. Uh, it, fe- it featured seven people, different ages, different backgrounds, uh, 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 just different all the way around, different ethnicities, and they met at a community college. Okay, Um, they had study hall together, um, and as they did, they began to build relationships with one another, and they became a community. They went through some crazy circumstances together. They went to parties together. They went on dates together. They even uh, fought a paintball apocalypse together. Trust me, it's as fun as it sounds. And while the show was extremely popular and it showed the lives of these people and the different things that they went through and the issues that they faced, um, the main problem that they faced in this show was the main problem that some of us face here today. Their community was built on connection, not foundation. The community was built on connection, not foundation. For some of us, we desire to be in community. We desire for people to like us, for people to know us, to be a part. So much that we start at connection and we stay there. 
We start at connection, but we never make it to foundation. And the problem with just connection is that at any point, connection can and will be broken if it has no foundation. Connection is not enough. It must have foundation. So the question that we run into is, what is your community? What is your foundation based upon? What is it based upon? Our relationships and our community has to be centered and founded and empowered by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Our relationship, our community has to be centered, empowered, and founded by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. True community, true relationship is a gift from God. It is a gift from God. And when we honor the divine purpose, when we honor the assignment of those relationships and we fully understand the impact that those relationships can have on our purpose and on our life, it can change everything. And it will change the way that we see our neighbor. It will change the way that we see our community. It will change the way that we see those that we are a part of. One of the biggest things that I learned is that proximity does not equal relationship. Okay? Proximity does not equal relationship. There are some people that you think that you're in relationship with, but you're just in proximity to. Just because you live next door to someone doesn't mean that you are in relationship with them. You're in proximity, but you're not in relationship. You're not in community with them. Community requires you sharing. Community requires you being. Community requires you doing life together. Godly relationships and godly community is designed to move us and assist us in getting to the destination and the purpose that God has planned for us, okay? Godly community, godly relationship is designed to move us and assist us in getting to the destination and the purpose that God has for our life. Hebrews chapter 10 uh, Here we go. Hebrews chapter 10, and let's start at verse 24. Verse 24 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. All the more as you see the day drawing near. The writer of Hebrews says, as Jesus' return gets closer, do this even more. All the more. Why? Because community keeps us on mission. It keeps us aligned to what God has called us to do. And as Jesus gets closer, the world gets darker. And as the world gets darker, the need for encouraging, the need for love, the need for community gets even greater. This is why relationship, this is why community is so important. Because as this world gets darker, we need it even more. But uh, when, when, when the writer of Hebrews is talking about this type of stirring up, it's talking about this type of encouragement, that can only happen with like-minded people who have the same foundation, who have the same destination, and who have the same mission. That only happens with people who have the same foundation, the same destination, and the same mission. Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two walk unless they be agreed? How can two walk unless they be agreed, unless they're going the same way, unless they have agreed to come and go together? How can they walk? The standard of our relationships, the standard of our community has to be based on foundation. And that foundation is the word of God. 
The standard of how we coincide with one another, the standard of how we uh, uh, treat one another, how we conversate with one another, how we pray for one another, how we lift for one another up, our thoughts about one another has to be founded on the word of God. So when we find ourselves in relationships, when we find ourselves in community, When we find ourselves in friendships that are not lined with the word of God, we have to be bold. We have to be willing to remove ourselves from those toxic relationships and communities so that we might be healed and that we might be freed. We have to be bold. We have to be willing. And I know there's this fear of being alone, but I promise you, I promise you that under no circumstances will the Lord have you just be alone. Because we don't want to leave. We, we, we like being together. We like, you know, the, the community of people. Hey, they're toxic, but at least I have somebody. God forbid. God forbid. We have to be willing to remove ourselves from those toxic relationships and those toxic communities in order to be healed. And to be who God has called us to be. Listen to me. At any age, at any age, healthy community and healthy relationships are a part of God's plan for your life. At any season of life, doesn't matter what's going on, healthy relationships and healthy community is a part of God's plan for your life. And we throw around this word toxic. And so some of you might feel triggered because I said that word. But let me tell you what it means when you're in something that's toxic. It means that you're in something that does not align with the word of God. I'm glad you put that up. Thank you. Something that does not align with the word. Because some of y'all need to take a picture just in case this is some like, you know what? Let me just keep this because just let me just check some things. I just need to check some things. Yes, you do. All right. How do I recognize if I'm in a toxic relationship or community? First of all, it's one that doesn't align with the word of God. Which means you probably should read the word of God. I'm just throwing that out there. Which probably means you need to know what it says so that you can know when what is happening doesn't align with it. Read the word for your... All right. Um, I I can't stay. I got to go. All right. That's not, not aligned with the word of God. The second thing, it's not encouraging. If you are in a community or in relationship with people that are not encouraging, that is toxic. All right. It's not encouraging. It's not uplifting. If everybody's down all the time, nobody got something good to say. God ain't did nothing for nobody. Everybody is upset and angry. And you wondering why you ain't never happy. It could be the people that you're around. I just need one. That's all. I just need one. All right. The rest of them, you know what it is? They, they checking themselves. They taking it. They like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, let me. All right. Some of y'all need to go in your contacts and start deleting some people. Matter of fact, don't delete, don't delete it because if they call, you won't know their number. And you'll be forced to pick up the phone. Just put do not answer. <laughs> do not answer. You do not answer one. Do not answer two. Do not answer three. Do not answer four. Just put them in there, okay? Not encouraging, not uplifting, uh, one-sided. One-sided relationships. I'm always the one calling. I'm always the one encouraging. I'm always, yeah, one-sided. That's not good, okay? Uh, Next, uh, spiritually and emotionally draining. I knew it wasn't going to be no amens. I said amen to myself before when I wrote it. So that I already know, okay? Spiritually and emotionally draining. When I talk to you every single time we get together, it is constantly negative. You got to make an adjustment. Why? Okay, because here's, let me give you two scenarios. Here's the first situation. The first situation is you might need to speak up and be like, hey, let's make some change. Let's wake up, okay? I understand it's bad. But God woke us up this morning, okay? 
He, he kept his anger. You talking, I'm talking, we got our voice. That's another thing we can be grateful for. We're here. That's another thing we can be grateful for. And so you speak up. Then if it doesn't change, you got to say, hey, look, I love you, but this is not going to work. I love you, but I got to leave you. Because in order for, for somebody that I'm going to be in community with, we got to be able to give and take. And I feel like you're at a place right now where you can't give. That's fine. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lift you up. But you can't be a part of this inner part of my circle because I, I need some help myself. Because if I'm coming in down, I don't need you pulling me down further. I to encourage one another. All right, I got to go. All right, what, was that the last one? Was that the last one? Okay, all right, all right. Uh, uh, one side and emotionally draining. That's what toxic means. Okay, so what does it look like uh, when like-minded people who have the same foundation, who have the same destination, who have the same mission get together? What does it look like? What does it, what I call, I call it a healthy circle. What does a healthy circle look like? The first thing it looks like is it looks like a supportive community. It looks like a supportive community. Helping and encouraging one another in your living, in your faith, and in your spiritual life. In your living, in your faith, in your spiritual life. Going back to Hebrews uh, 10, 24, he said, let us consider how to stir one another up. You get together, you begin talking about the goodness of God, talking about what God has done, talking about the miracles that you've seen along the way, talking about how God has been faithful, talking about how he brought you up, talking about all of it. It begins to stir you up. He says, let us consider how to stir up one another and uh, stir up one another to love and good works, not to not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. Here we go. But encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So this supportive community, helping and encouraging one another in your living and your faith in your spiritual life. So when you look at the people that you are in relationship with, that you are in community with, ask yourself, is this a supportive community? That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing it looks like is it looks like continually cultivating authentic relationships continually cultivating authentic relationships. What does that mean? What does it mean to continually cultivate authentic relationships? It means being open. It means being honest. It means being vulnerable. It means allowing people into your life and into the issues and the things that are going on in your life. Cultivating authentic relationships. And we don't want to do this. You know why? Because we don't want people in our business. Plain and simple. Because we grew up where you don't say nothing, I'm not going to say nothing, and we're just going to live our life. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. House is burning down. <laughs> it is burning down. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm good. Yeah, good to see you. See you next week. Hallelujah. Demolished. <laughs> right? This is what we grew up doing and, and seeing and repeating. Hey, how you feeling? Well, you know, I'm good. Just, you know, how everything is good. No, you are dying on the inside. You are suffering. You are crying yourself to sleep at night. And because you refuse to be open, because you refuse to be honest, because you refuse to be vulnerable, you cannot receive the benefit of cultivating open, healthy, honest relationships. And so you go through life alone. You go through life struggling. You go through life trying to think that you are strong enough to do it by yourself. That is a lie from the enemy. The enemy desires you to be in isolation so that nobody can fight with you and fight for you. That's why he wants you in isolation, because he's like, if I can get you by your, the Bible says wherever two or three are gathered, there he is. If you would just be willing, if you would just be, and guys, men, husbands, fathers, pull it together. 
guys, I know they told us not to say nothing. I know they told us not to say nothing. They told us to keep it inside. They told us we would just, just hold it together and hold it together and you'll be fine. That's what they said. That is a lie from the enemy, men. Listen to me. Listen to me. Men, we have to be open. We have to be honest. We have to be real about what's going on in our life. We can't do it alone. It is impossible. Jesus, the son of God, came down to this earth. And as he was here, he established community. He had 12 disciples, and in those 12, he had those that were close to him. Now, if the Son of God had come down to this earth and established community, and you're like, oh, well, Jesus was, and he wasn't, okay. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he is there about to die. And he comes out in this moment, and he says, guys, I am sorrowful to the point of death. I mean, it don't get more more open and vulnerable than that. I feel like I am about to die, guys. Can you just pray with me? Can you just be with me? Can you lift me up in this moment? I am sorrowful to the point of death. Now, if the Son of God, God manifested in the flesh, came down on this earth and had community and was open, honest, and vulnerable then what are we supposed to do? The only way that we can get through it is together. The only way that we can be the men that God has called us to be, the husbands that God has called us to be, the fathers that God has called us to be, is when we do it in community. Trust God for the people that he will bring you. Trust God. God, for the conversations that you, I don't want nobody all up in my business. The Lord already knows. And I guarantee you, the men that you talk to, they've already been through it too. The enemy will tell you, no, you just need to be quiet. You you just don't need to say anything. Why? Because in isolation is how he looks to defeat you. I got to get out of here. Okay. So continually cultivating authentic relationships. Galatians 6 uh, uh, verse 2 says, Carry one another's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the requirement of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love. Carry one another's burdens. When you look this word up in the Greek, this word carry refers to lifting up with hands. It refers to upholding or supporting one another. To be in healthy friendships, to have healthy community that honors God, we have to learn to uphold one another, to support one another, to carry one another's burdens. Here we go. Not take them on. There's a difference. There is a difference. Because some of us, we care, we, we, it's, it's like somebody's here, we, we're carrying it together, we're lifting it up, carrying it, and then this, this is what we do. We're carrying it together, and then we're like, you know what, I'll just, I'll just. Uh. You were never meant to carry it. You were meant to hold it together, to lift up with, to support one another in their burdens, And we have to be careful in our community and in our relationships for the sake of our peace, for the sake of our family, for the sake of our solitude, that we're not putting on burdens that we were just meant to assist in. That requires maturity, that requires discernment, that requires you being spiritually full and at a place in a spiritual maturity in a place to where you can see that. I will pray for you. I will pray with you. I will intercede for you. I will intercede with you, with, together. But if you tell me and then you don't do nothing about it, then if it ain't heavy for you, then I don't need to pick it up. We're meant to carry one another's burdens. It says carry one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the requirement of the law, the requirement of the law of Christian love. Authentic relationship requires you to be willing and trusting. Here we go. 
It requires you to be willing and trusting that who you're in relationship with, who you're in community with is God ordained. Okay? When you are trusting and you're believing that the person that you're, the people that you're in relationship with, that you're in community with is God ordained, that freedom will allow you to remove the walls of fear and the walls of protection that hinder you from experiencing authentic relationship. That willingness, that trusting, that starts with prayer. God, I thank you for the people who are in my life. God, I thank you that those who are not meant to be in my community, that you would remove them. And I trust you to remove them whether I want them removed or not. God, I thank you for the people that are in my community, that are in my circle. I lift them up. God, I thank you for sending people to me. God, I thank you for, what am I doing? I'm praying so that when they come, they're supposed to be there. And when they go, they're supposed to be gone. Sometimes y'all, y'all are holding on to people. Never mind. I got to go. Uh, <laughs> blessed subtraction. Okay. Biblical love is the decision to compassionately, righteously, and sacrificially seek the well-being of another. That's what this means. Biblical love is the decision to compassionately, righteously, and sacrificially seek the well-being of another. And the best example we see that through was Jesus the best example we see doing that is Jesus, this idea. So we said a, a, a healthy circle, a supportive community, cultivating authentic relationship. And lastly, uh, it looks like people serving one another in love. It looks like people serving one another in love. Biblically, uh, Serving one another is this, it's something that requires the Holy Spirit. It's this decision to compassionately and righteously and sacrificially seek the well-being of someone else. That requires humility. That requires vulnerability. That requires boldness. That requires you being selfless. If you are the type of person that never wants to be inconvenienced, then that is why you're not in community. If you can't adjust your schedule, if you can't have people calling you, if you don't, I don't want to talk on the phone. Yeah, that's why you're not in community. It's this idea of being selfless. It's this idea of of being humble and serving someone other than yourself. It's the idea of being vulnerable, being bold. These are the things that we need the Holy Spirit's help in doing because Jesus has commanded us to do just this. Let's look at Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 5. Verse 13 and 14. Verse, thir- verse 13. Make sure I said that right. Galatians 5, 13 to 14 says, For you, my brothers, were called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the sinful nature, the worldliness, the selfishness, but through love, serve and seek the best for one another. Through love, serve and seek the best for one another. For the whole law concerning human relationship. Here we go. The whole law. He says everything concerning human relationship is fulfilled in this one precept, this one law, this one idea, this one concept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, 
In case you didn't know, let me break it down. He says, that is, have unselfish concern for others and do things for their benefit. This healthy circle looks like serving one another in love. When we serve one another in love, it doesn't mean that we do whatever they want and agree with them at every turn. It means that we remind them of our collective commitment to the Lord. To the Lord, We encourage them when the time gets hard. We reaffirm them in their decision to follow Jesus and, and, and their decision to, to stay true to the word of God. It means that we will have moments of correcting. Hey, hey, no, nah, we don't do that. We don't do that. We, we are Christians. We are believers. We are followers of Jesus. We don't talk like that. We don't walk like that. It means that you will have time of correcting in love. But this is the responsibility of those who are in relationship. It's a responsibility to say, hey, you need to pull it together. I love you. We're going to walk this thing together, but we're going to do it right. And be willing to hear that from someone else when they tell you that and not get offended and high and mighty. Who are you? I'm your friend. That's who. I'm the person that God sent for you to be in relationship with so that we can walk together and fulfill who. That's who I am. So it's willing to be uh, able to hear that and able to receive that. It is not all coffee hangouts and catching up. Because some of us think we're in relationship because we go to coffee and we go to hangouts and we, how are you doing and how are things? No, if you're not being vulnerable, honest, and open, again, that's proximity. That's not relationship. It's authentic relationship that supports one another and serves one another in love. This is what a healthy circle looks like. Supportive community, continually cultivating our authentic relationship and people serving one another in love. This idea of community, this idea of relationship comes from God. God is a community calling us to be people of community. We are built and created for community and relationship. God has given us a gift And that gift is one another. That gift is one another. And how we steward that gift is very much vital. It's important, not just for us, but for them as well. In community, we learn who we are. We learn who we are not. We learn how we're wired. We learn how to communicate. And we learn how to love as Christ has called us to love. In relationship, we learn how to encourage. We learn how to be accountable, how to be humble. And when we fully engage in this construct that God has created, when we fully lean into these things, that is when we can truly be a brother or a sister in Christ. David and Jonathan, Ruth and Naomi, Paul and Timothy, Jesus and the disciples, all throughout the scriptures, we see amazing things happening to people as they are in relationship, as they are in community. And for us to think that we can successfully live this life outside of community is a fool's errand. And the enemy is banking on some of us running that errand. In relationship, In community is protection, is peace, is strength, is wisdom. And when we are in community and in relationship, we are in Christ. These things play a very pivotal and critical role in our journey with Christ. In a world that grows darker as the day of the Lord approaches, the urgency A fostering community based on God's word has never been greater. We are created for community. Like-minded believers with a shared vision, a shared destination, and a shared mission. 
when we do that, we truly reflect God's heart. These connections are designed to uplift us. They're designed to to show us God's plan and God's purpose for our life. They're designed for us to be together. Let's not just build connections. Let's build solid foundations on the word of God. I told my my team this morning, um, you know, moving here to California was a very big deal for me. I left everything that I knew. I left everyone that I knew, and I was just here. And I got the opportunity to uh, stay somewhere, uh, and as I was there, um, I learned to lean into community. And what I told my team is I said, um, um, had I not leaned into community, I wouldn't be here today. Josh, would you start the path for me? I said, if I didn't lean into community, I would not be married right now. Uh, when I got here, as I said, I got a place to stay. Uh, and there was a, a young lady who would come to my house every day, twice a week, three times a week. And um, I'm not used to being vulnerable. I'm not used to being open. And I just had so many things going on. I'm by myself. I'm, 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 I got this girl that I like, and I don't know what I should do. Should I go further? Should I go back home? I don't know what to do. And so uh, Miss Pat Minner uh, would come to the house, and I would have an opportunity to just share. I, I'm a talker. I like people. And so, in case you didn't know, um, I, I had this, and I'd be like, what should I do? This is how I feel. This is what's going on. I, should I go back home? How do I know I'm going to make it? You know, I, I feel I'm uneasy, Uh, you know, is this crazy? I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know what's going on. And Ms. Pat Manor would just be there listening. Let me run, just get it all out. And she would say, so what you gonna do? She would say, have you thought about this? She would say, well, you know, if you look at Jesus, and then she would continue doing what she was doing and she would leave. And that began to be a thing. And through those moments of vulnerability, through those moments of being open and honest and trusting, the Lord began to open doors. The Lord began to guide me out of those conversations into decisions that allowed me to get married, that allowed me to have two beautiful kids, that allowed me to start a church, that allowed me to walk in the plan and the destination that God had for my life as I stand here today. Because of one decision, to say, you know what? Even though I don't know this, even though this is something that's unfamiliar to me, I'm going to lean into community. I'm going to lean into relationship. And it changed my life forever. Who has God put in your circle? Who has God put you in community with? That you need to let go of the fears, let go of the worries, and lean into. Because if we're going to have a foundation... We're going to build our foundation on the word. Then we got to do it in community. We have to do it in relationship with one another. It's hard to do the one another's alone. So my challenge for you this week. Reach out to someone in your... Let me go back. Pray (laughs) first. Hallelujah. Pray. Be led. Reach out to someone in your community. Share your burden. Offer encouragement. Lean into the gift that God has brought us. 
Allow the Holy Spirit to guide your conversations and trust that he will lead you into deeper, more authentic relationships that honor him. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for speaking to us today. I thank you for the gift of one another. Each person is precious. And you being the God that you are, looked down through time and has placed people around each and every one of us designed to build us, to lift us, to encourage us, and to keep us on mission. So God, I thank you for those who are in relationships that need to end, that you would end them. That you would make them aware of the need to end them and that you would bring new ones. And for those of us that are in relationships, that you would strengthen those relationships. For those of us that are afraid, that we would recognize that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, joy, sound mind. And that you love us so much that you will keep us, you will care for us, and you will bring vessels, hands and feet alongside us to do just that. Thank you for the gift of relationship. Thank you for the gift of community. We honor you. We love you. We trust you. In Jesus' name.